What's up, y'all? It's your boy eBay Fight Predictions in the building, and this is your Ricky Simone versus Song Yudong breakdown. I cannot wait to talk about this fight. Uh, one of my favorite fights on the card. Actually, one of my favorite fights of the year. I've been building this motherfucking fight up for a minute. Uh, I've been kind of killed. I've made two breakdowns on it that has never actually premiered. I made an early breakdown uh, on the uh, on the matchup, actually. Um, two, I think two months back, and it got fucking deleted because of copyright or some bullshit. Because I, uh, I showed a fight of uh, Song Yudong getting knocked out uh, back in the day. So that got deleted. Uh, then I, I made a fight about the Coleman event spot that they were in coming up for the Curtis plays versus Sergey Pavlovich fight. It, you know, I could have posted this for that, but it was a three round fight. There's so many things that are going into this. Uh, now it's five rounds. They're stepping up. Uh, these guys are showing out. And uh, I, I just feel like I had to make another breakdown for this because I'm actually happy this is how this is it's gone down that these guys are getting the opportunity to main event i, I think they deserve it obviously song dong has done it before but ricky simone has earned this this guy has been through hell this guy has been through ridicule humiliation anything you could call it but to get back to this moment uh, where he was a few years back in 2018 uh when he fought uh uriah favor uh, in sacramento in a co-main event slot in one of the biggest fights of his career and he fumbled the bag i i say it as a ricky simone fan he fumbled the bag now he's back a few years later and he's in a in in a main event slot for five rounds against song dong under crazy circumstances that's this is the definition of step up this is the definition of show out and put out you know um these guys are gonna go out and leave it all in there and i just can't wait for this fucking fight um I, i've watched so much tape on both guys it, it's insane i've watched so much i feel like i've watched every ricky Simone fight in the ufc uh and i could tell you exactly how it went down song Dung's also a phenomenal fighter too and uh, i i just love the fight um in terms of the rankings um and i also I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't have enough time to do a film study breakdown on this. I would love to do it, but I just, I just didn't have enough time. And uh, because I have a pack watch video coming out, I, I promise you guys. I know I promised Tuesday, Wednesday, and we're kind of over that limit, but I will get that video out. Um, I, that is a, a promise uh, that I am making and I am keeping. I will get that video out. Rankings, UFC rankings. So uh, in the UFC rankings, uh, we have Song Yudong ranked at number eight and Ricky Simone ranked at number ten. Awesome, awesome placement. Um, in terms of the tail of the tape, uh, Song Yudong comes with a record of 19 and 7 and 1. Uh, he's fighting out of Sacramento, age 25, a high to 5 8, and a 67. Uh, Ricky Simone comes with a record of 20 and 3, baby. Uh, he's fighting out of Washington, age 30, a high to 5 6, and a reach of 70. So uh, Ricky Simone will have the reach advantage. But um, I, I just love this matchup because both guys have tremendously improved since. Uh, since them coming out uh, a few years before where they had this massive hype three years before, right? Like Ricky Simone was on this really big tear, uh, beat Ronnie Yaya. And then when he got the matchup with Uriah Faber, they were like, let's go, right? Let's do this. Um, he's a legit guy. I remember when the UFC had made a video, top prospects to check out, both these guys were on it. You know what I'm saying? And now they've gotten to the moment where they're fighting each other. You know, they were big. You know, Song Dong, I, I'll never forget the knockout he had over, I forgot the guy's name. Uh, uh, it's Alex something. Um, it's something. Yeah, Alejandro Perez. Yeah, I forgot. It, I thought it was Alex Perez, but it's Alejandro Perez. And I'll never forget that. Um, when he did that to Perez, it was insane. He fucking murdered him. And, um, dude his name was big everyone's like future champ future champ and he's living up to those expectations i think he's progressing uh very very like greatly in the ufc but ricky simone on the other hand i feel like is probably one of the most underrated guys in the division doesn't get enough credit um you know after beating ronnie yaya just he He's been on an insane run. Yeah, he, he went on a two-fight losing streak, but uh, went on a crazy five-fight win streak after that and, and has made it to this moment. And, and that's what I love about this fight. There's no real story. It's just one guy trying to move up and another guy defending a spot in the rankings. Um, but for me, there is a storyline because I am one of the biggest Ricky Simone fans of all time, in my humble opinion. And I have been ride or die Ricky Simone. And I have taken a lot of criticism, but I've also taken a lot of fucking uh, come-ups, right? You 
motherfuckers told me Jack Shore was supposed to beat this guy and what happened. Now we're at the moment where, okay, all right, Jack Shore didn't get it done, but we got selling it on. We're going to humble eBay. We're going to teach eBay respect. You know what I'm saying? Uh, his guy, Ricky Simone, ch no chin Simone will get smoked by selling it on. And that's what's really on the line right now, you know? Uh, you guys get to talk shit to me, and I, hey, I promise, I, I will come, I will come, <laughs> I will come, I will come prepared after Saturday. Uh, but I just cannot wait for this matchup. I cannot wait for this fight. Um, and yeah, but one of the things that I look at is obviously Song Yudong is T-Rex arms. Ricky Simone is really long um, yeah, for this matchup. But Ricky Simone doesn't fight really long. You know, he fights in the pocket. You know, he goes for the body you know you look at his boxing combinations i love it but where ricky simone's bread and butter is is the transition from his boxing combination or his leg kicks or his high kicks to his wrestling the kid has some of the best um in, in my humble opinion big double licks uh in the game right now he picks guys up and fucking old school wwf fucking batista fucking spine buster their ass all the way down the fucking octagon and he does it at such a high clip like it's insane right um and he's just a such a physical wrestler just grinding and he hits so hard you know the guy hits hard as fuck i think his power is also underrated uh going into this matchup i truly truly believe that uh but you know obviously song i would say has the power advantage and is probably the better inside pocket fighter has the better hands but i think ricky simone striking has gone a long way since his ronnie yaya fight and especially his rob font fight he's not as robotic with his hand movement it's more smooth there's more slicker he throws a lot of good one-on-one -one combinations but the, uh, you know it, it is what it is but let's talk, talk about song you know, and what he's accomplished in his resume the guy has a good resume don't get it twisted the guy is legit as it comes um he gave Corey sanhagen hell uh but you, you look at what he's accomplished right he has the win over vince morales alejandro perez Went to a draw with Cody Stamen. So this this fight right here, Cody, let, let me talk about I thought Cody Stamen clearly won. He out-wrestled him. He outworked him. Um, and he just was the better fighter, in my humble opinion. Um, and I thought he won, but they saved uh, Song Dong's career with a draw. Then Song fights Marlon Vera. This was a really close fight. I When I rewatched it, I, I was like, you know what? It's not as much of a robbery I thought it was watching it live. Uh, but I thought Marlon Vera did enough to win uh, the fight. Uh, but it was a really, really close fight. But he actually does have a win over Marlon Vera. And he was winning that first round, in my opinion. Then he got hit with a dose of reality called Kyla Phillips. And Kyla Phillips completely whooped his ass. There, you know, Kyla Phillips styled on. He took him down at will. Um, he high kicked him at will. He just was the better, faster, and more complete fighter in there. Right? He, he whooped Song Gadong's ass. Like, a, a legit. Um... Song was a bit of a punching bag in there. He was chasing. He wasn't cutting off the octagon. Um, I'm not saying Song is not a good fighter. I don't mean that without a shadow of a doubt. Great boxing, great uh, combination punches, great power, great speed. Um, but again timing beats speed a lot and kyla phillips had really good timing and he just he just countered him out well and just the takedowns were beautiful it just that got that kyla phillips performance is probably one of the most underrated performances uh of all time because it was on the prelims i'll never forget they put this kid on the prelims and i was like you guys are tripping man this is a phenomenal scrap so you know it is what it is but kyle phillips really showed out that night then he fights casey kenny and he wow he, he wowed me in the casey kenny fight showed beautiful body kicks beautiful counters good takedown defense in this fight just stuffed all the takedowns um and looked really really good um and he just I, he showed that he was more than just a boxer in mma in, in this uh, in this matchup and he, he beat casey kenny uh he fought julio arch beautiful knockout on the second round and got him out of there then he fought marlon Moraes. Or the dead corpse of Marlon Rice. I, I don't really consider this a real legitimate win, but it is what it is. Uh, you know, Tiger and Wood Tide, uh, Marlon will always live forever in eBay's heart, but my God, did fucking Song Dong melt his face off. Beautiful overhand lead hook and then rear uppercut combo to end it. It was such a beautiful combination. One of the most brutal chaos I've seen in a long time. Completely stunted on Marlon and uh, got him out of there. Uh, with the quickness and he fought Corey Sanhagen to a really really good performance he did really good but I, I thought Corey was kind of doing his thing I didn't think they went life and death like I thought originally when I watched life when I rewatched I thought Corey was comfortably winning he did hurt Corey and he had a lot of good um 
you know, moments in the grappling against Corey, but Corey eventually, you know, glued on him. You know what I'm saying? He was, he withered on him. He eventually broke onto him. And he, yeah, like you look at the stat of takedown attempts and takedowns landed. Yeah, but it doesn't tell the story because it was a constant progression to a takedown for Corey Sanhagen when he eventually got that takedown uh, at the end uh, of that fourth round. It was just like he broke him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and he, he really did his thing. And obviously the elbow and this and that. And, you know, it is what it is. The fight was competitive. Don't get it twisted. But, uh, I I thought Corey was the more superior fighter, but uh, but now we're here. He's matched up with Ricky Simone, but let's look at Ricky Simone's resume. And I, you know, some of you guys might hate, but whatever. Um, uh, and you guys can call me biased all you want. Yeah, I'm gonna be biased here when I'm talking about this cat, this cat's resume because I watch a lot of these fights. Um, right, he has the win over Murad Devishvili. Now, was Murad winning? Yes, he was. He was. Uh, did uh fucking Ricky do his thing near the end? Yeah, and Ricky has that win, and Ricky will always have that win. And I, I truly believe they run it back. I think Ricky beats him. And I and I stand on that. I think Ricky is the guy to beat Marab. I really, really, truly believe that. I think Ricky will be in these conversations in the top five. Laugh at me now. Laugh at me. I'm dying on this hill. I laugh at me now. Um, then he fought Montel Jackson, legit dude, uh, tall, long, and lanky, hits hard, and my God, did he put it on him in the wrestling, and Montel, he gave a good account of himself, even hurt Ricky Simone a little bit, uh, and this is when Ricky was more robotic, uh, the boxing wasn't there, wasn't as crisp uh, as it is now, and, um, you know, Montel actually had some moments in there and was able to, you know, give a good account of himself, but Ricky got the win with the wrestling, then the Ronnie Yaya fight, this was an insane fight, I mean, you're all right, y Yaya actually kind of hurt him a little bit in this fight these guys were just scrapping and they were going back and forth and just ricky was too wild and uh and it, it, it costed him you know winning this fight costed him because then he fought the right favorite fight i saw it live sadly in sacramento uh to, to fuck this card and i talked all my shit i said ricky someone's gonna end this year i favorite cat you guys are gonna cry and then fucking favor comes out to one of the craziest entrance uh entrances of all time bro like the crowd was shaking like you guys could even hear it through the video but if you were there live it was fucking they went bananas like i was like whoa like did fucking donald trump come out or something <laughs> like what is going on you know but he came out and um dude the when he knocked them out bro or i you know early stoppage or whatever but uh when he did get the uh, the knockdown or he heard him it went ballistic and it was just one of those weird things where your eye favor just came out kind of weird where he just came out karate style and hands super low and he's just waiting for the shot and it was probably something he saw on tape obviously there's a factor of uriah being in this fight that's why i mentioned him a lot because he's probably gonna be in the corner of song dong he's gonna tell him this is how you beat this kid you gotta land that perfect shot and I i'm sorry this ain't the same kid my guy this ain't the same kid in 2019 it, it is not this is a different e more evolved grinder more evolved competitor more evolved wrestler and we're gonna put it on song okay all right and uh obviously it is what it is but uh <laughs> then he fights rob font rob font did his thing he he kind of told ricky right there he kind of schooled him but rob font is that guy you guys know rob font's my boy so uh i love there but then ricky showed to me in this fight that he's championship material when he beat ray borg he was able to out wrestle ray borg who's normally the guy that out wrestles you and don't forget ray borg is the same guy that challenged for a title that was a top five flyweight he is a legit competitor i thought ray borg even beat casey ken he got robbed there in my opinion um ray borg is that guy uh then ricky you know took a step down in competition in his next two fights against Gantano perillo beat him with ease Brian Keller showed beautiful transitions from boxing to wrestling. Just completely owned Keller. And then he fought Asan Sao. Uh, destroyed Asan Sao. Knocked him out. Got him out of there. And I was like, fuck, man. His hands got better, bro. Like, I, you, you compare Cody Garvin's performance against Asan Sao and then Ricky's. It's not even this. In my opinion, I thought Ricky outperformed Cody there. And then he fought Jack Shore. And this one, oh, my head. Young Kaz. Fuego. Oh, Jack Shore. Oh, Jack Shore's gonna knock out your boy. Ba, 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 ba. Bow, bow, bow. Boom. <laughs> Arm triangle. You're done. And that's how it went. He owned Jack Shore. He sent Jack Shore at 145. And that is the God on his truth. All right. And he's gonna do the same thing to Song Young. Actually, he's not gonna send him at 145, but he's gonna send his ass back home. 
crying with a broken face and maybe some <laughs> some bad shoulders because we're breaking him all right and that's the goddamn fact yeah can song land a, a clean uppercut can he do what your eye for do pull back uh overhand combo right can he do yeah of course he can fucking do that you don't think i know that i know that but i believe in ricky this kid has earned this all right he's fucking grinded for this and we're gonna teach Song Dong, the meaning of embrace the grind. We're gonna put him in wrestling school, baby. Takedown after takedown, and we might punch him while he's down. All right, we're gonna put it on Ricky, and I got Simone by fourth round arm triangle choke. He's gonna finish this. He's gonna break him, and he's gonna take Song Dong out, and he's gonna end this clown show that you guys just start. Oh, Song's gonna smoke the song. You don't think I see? I see the comments, motherfuckers. But eBay fight predictions will be with Ricky like this and we're going all the way to the fucking title shot baby we well, hope you guys enjoy it <laughs> hope you guys enjoy the video <laughs> got a little hype near the end but uh it's your boy I'm out of here I'll get on my Instagram and my Twitter like comment share video let's get this eBay by Prediction Nation going love y'all and goodbye fight since i was an amateur that's been something I've, I've always done and and uh it's good i saw matt hughes do it when i was super young and i'm like wow and it, it, it's so much better when you run them over to your corner because your corner could like talk crap to them they can give you <laughs> you know direct instructions where you can hear them great it's also like a power move like i'm gonna pick you up i'm gonna walk you across the cage and like slam you on you know like i don't know the fan the fans seem to like it too